<laughs> hey, look at that. I'm working on it, Mr. Sam. It's an actual instrument, though. I'm impressed. It's not spoons. I can really do this. I'm in. Hey, it's like an actual song coming out of there, too. So you theater people, what song is that from, even though I'm doing it quite poorly, <laughs> right? I don't know what that is. You don't really know? No, what is it? Is the theme from Fiddler on the Roof. Oh, I see. I, th I think there was a Fiddler one. on the Roof. He was. And if he was a rich man, I don't know. There's if something. I were a rich man. Yeah. That wasn't too bad. You know, that was no cowbell, but... It was uh, not cowbell, but it wasn't bad. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I really am. Yes, indeed. Well, you know, I'm All right, ladies and gentlemen. Better than I, you know, I actually maybe maybe the violin is my instrument. Perhaps it needs a little bit of work. Yeah, I'll keep exploring that one. All right, so uh, podcast four point five is the last one for chapter four. We're going to be looking at reaction stoichiometry. So, hey guys, on this one, the trick is um, I don't have any sets of rules for you. I don't have. It's just we're going to work some problems. You just do it. Yep. We're just going to work problem one, two, three, four, maybe five and six, whatever it is. And we're going to solve a bunch of problems. Absolutely. I will say one thing here that you should write down somewhere on your paper. The key equation. The key equation is m times v equals moles. Yep. And we did this uh, some time ago, but if you don't do this, you don't know nothing. So you must take the find everything and convert it to moles. Always. Always to moles. Convert to moles. No matter moles what it is. or nothing. Convert to moles. moles. Mm -hmm. Or actually milli moles is even better. So we will do that as well. Yep. Here we go. Okay. Are. All right. Most of the things we'll have are in milli liters. Milli liters, milli moles. Like milli is good. Like milli. Like it, the aunt milli. She is the lady from your past. I had a cat named Millie. Did you? I have Mildred. no cat named Millie. Mildred. It's just Millie. So he's a fiddler on the roof. Now he's acquired a quasi Russian accent. I Russian? Maybe so. Is that what it is? I don't know <laughs> what it is. I don't know what it is either. All right, I'll try to be clear <laughs> when I talk. Okay, now. Okay, here we go. Frankly, these screens I have on here are going to do me no good at all because I need lots of space. We need lots of space. So I'm going to go right to the back. By the way, do you understand, Mr. Sams, what the background is? Um, I see a bunch of dead trees. Dead trees is exactly what it is because they were killed by... A uh, pine bark beetle? Oh, no. acid rain. Acid Sorry. rain. These Run. are acid rain Those of you out in internet trees. land, a lot of our trees are leaving to the beetles, but yes. Okay. okay, that works too. Sorry. Barium chloride. So now, oh, it, it is a stoichiometry problem, so I must yes. always start with a... Balanced chemical you equation. You must balanced. If it's not balanced, it's bad. Okay, balance it. Okay, so we have barium chloride. So that's B-A-C-L-2. Now, in this case, I'm not going to revert to the net ionic like we did in the previous problems because you want to work with a full ionic equation. I like that way first. Yeah. So barium, barium chloride reacts with... Sodium sulfate. So that's Na2SO4. Now, I'm going to do this pretty quickly. That's mm -hmm. just play the charge game. You look them up if you need to. Yep. That's going to do a double replacement, and you're going to make barium sulfate and NaCl. Now to balance this equation, you will simply need your problems with your sodiums. You'll need to put a two in front of the sodium chloride. Looks good to me. Now something you also probably will need to know um, is which particular product is a precipitate. Mm, yes. And how would you need to know that? Knackle no so. Knackle no so. And you see we have a knackle here, so that means he is. Definitely soluble. So that means that oh, also knackle no so is all so sulfates are soluble. Except for oh. a few and barium is one of those barium, few. Barium, lead, and mercury. Yeah. And barium is an exception. So this right here is the precipitate and calcium. That's correct. All right. And so now I'm going to write down what I know underneath what I know. Mm -hmm. I have, of the barium chloride, I have 10 milliliters. And I have it at a 0.25 molar solution. Mm -hmm. The sodium sulfate... Also 10 milliliters? Is also 10 milliliters. 0.35 molar solution. A little solution. bit more concentrated. So I'm just writing data down. All right, now this is going to introduce um, what I like to call an ice table. All right, so we're going to just kind of create a line under here. It's like having like a data table underneath here. 
okay, and you're going to kind of see this. And I stands for initial, or the initial amount of each chemical. Now, the barium sulfate, how many initially do I have there, Mr. Sam? That's zero. That's easy, and the salt is also zero. Because we don't have any products yet. No we products. This is before together. the reactants have mixed together. And so now I'm going to convert these to millimoles. So I'm going to use what equation, Mr. Sams? Molarity times volume. Molarity times volume. And now I would like to work with millimoles. So I can just take 10 times 0.25. Now, you rock and roll scientists, it's very easy. The number is... Uh, 2.5 millimoles. And this, of course, will be 3.5 millimoles. Now, this is actually, if you think about it, a limiting reactant problem. Mm -hmm. You must find out which one you're going to run out of first. Now, the beauty of this first problem is that the mole to mole ratio is 1 to 1. Mm, yes. Very and nice. so um, the one I have the least amount of is the one I will run yeah. out of first. And frankly, guys, doing. Uh, limiting reactant problems this way, I think it's a lot easier than doing yes. limiting reactant problems the other way. So now I'm going to, how much of, which one is the limiting reactant? Uh, probably the one we have less of. So that makes the barium chloride the yeah, limiting since reactant. since they're one to one ratios. Now the C, by the way, stands for change. So we're going to lose some of each of the chemicals as the reaction transpires. So you're going to lose all of the limiting reactants. And how much will you have remaining? Zero. Zero. It's all going away. All going away. And that's not totally true. We'll explain well. that. And then this, of course, is going to lose the same amount. Now, it's important to note that it's the same amount because this ratio is one to one. Right. If it's a different ratio, we'll, and we'll do an example like that. And, of course, what's left over is one millimole. Now, the barium sulfate will go what? What will happen? Now, again, this is a nice one to one, one, to one, one ratio. ratio. Looks like we're going to gain 2.5. He's going to gain the same amount of millimoles. So his total amount, of, it, by the way, did I say this? And E stands for the ending amount. Yes. Sometimes equilibrium, if you're doing an equilibrium problem, this is right. not an equilibrium problem. Nope. And this, of course, will do the same, but I'm going to ignore this, and you'll see why, because it's a NAC coal. It's a soluble yeah, product. Yeah, it still stays dissolved. We now, the big question is, what are the concentration... Actually, what is, how many grams of precipitate form? Yeah, that's part B in your question. Part B. And so the question I want to answer is, if this is my moles of precipitate, millimoles. actually my millimoles, I then simply will do a conversion. I'm going to do it on a separate sheet here, because I want to save some space on that sheet. If I have 2.5 millimoles of barium sulfate, and I will say... Now, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to say that one millimole of barium sulfate is equal to so many milligrams of barium sulfate. Now, this is simply the molar mass expressed in milligrams per millimole. So you just go onto the periodic table, and it's 233.3 milligrams. That is just simply barium, 137, plus sulfur, 32, plus oxygen, 16 times 4. And the millimoles of the barium sulfate cancel, and you just multiply by 233, and you get 583 0.3 milligrams of barium sulfate. Now, if, if you need to convert to grams, you would just divide by 1,000. That'd be 0 0.583 grams of barium sulfate. You could set that up if you needed to, but that is essentially the answer to question B. Mm -hmm. Now, the second part, I want to go back to my previous screen. Yeah. Real quick, as a side note, guys, on your handouts on letter C, at the end in the parentheses, it says use a BCA table. That's the same thing as an ICE table. It's um, just another way that I've done it before, oh, yeah. and it's before change and after versus initial change and end. The reason I call it a BCA table is when we do get to equilibrium and we use the ice table, I just do them so they have different names, but it's going to work the same way either way. Just well, maybe we could go with BCA. We'll go with BCA on this one. And I like that, Mr. Simpson. Okay. We'll go that method. We'll go BCA and then now, do ice for equilibrium? Yeah, I think okay. that's a good call. And letter C, um, concentrations of ions present. Now... That means, now what ions are present? All right, let's think about this reaction here. I really would like to have a space here, but we have barium, we have chloride, we have sodium, and we have sulfate. Right. And one of the chemicals is totally used up. Yeah, all the barium chloride gets used up. Well, that's not exactly true, Mr. Actually, Sims. all the barium Only gets the barium in the barium chloride gets used up right. because the only thing that made the precipitate in the barium chloride was the barium. Right. So the chloride is actually, we want to find the concentration of the chloride. Now, here is the kind of critical point. I had 2.5 millimoles of chloride, and since over here none of it reacted, 
It's still an ion. It's still an ion. Now, we do have a bit of an issue here is that we do have a 2. Here's BACL2. Mm -hmm. So when you have um, BACL2, let me do it on a blank screen here. If I have um, 2.5 millimoles of barium chloride, and none of the chloride got used up because it's still kind of hanging around as an ion. If you were to draw a flat beaker or whatever, you would find the chlorides hanging out, just floating around. And, and you'd, but you'd find two of them for every one um, unit of barium chloride. Right. So actually, how many millimoles of chloride do you have? We'll just have to multiply by two, so I'll have five millimoles of barium chloride. So the concentration of the chloride ion will be equal to two times 2.5 millimoles. That's the moles. And molarity, of course, is in units of moles, moles per, per liter. And so if we knew the number of, actually, if we put milliliters on the bottom, then my millis will cancel. The yeah. total volume of the solution, now if we go total back. Total volume, we started with 10 milliliters of barium chloride, and we added 10 milliliters of sodium sulfate. So that's a total of 20 milliliters for our total volume. So I simply will put in here on the bottom 20 milliliters. So it's going to be essentially 5 over 20 fourths. Is that 0.25, it Mr. Is. Sams? So that is 0 0.25 molar. You see? That is the molarity of the uh, chloride. chloride. Now notice I also use these brackets, mm -hmm. and the brackets represent concentration. concentration in units of molarity, which of course is moles per liter. But the, also it's in terms of millimoles. That says millimoles per milliliter. I did it too fast on my tablet. Hmm. Okay. So we did the chloride, and now we want to do the, now the barium. Actually, we could really quickly do the barium. What is the concentration of the barium? Zero. And that's Ba2 positive, and there are none of that left over because it's all used it up. It got all turned into barium sulfate. So that leaves us with the sodium and the sulfate. Let's do the sodium because it's also part of the sodium chloride mm -hmm. and did not react, and there's a 2 right there. So um, for the sodium, so the concentration of the sodium ion will be equal to um, there was 3.5 millimoles of that. Look mm -hmm. at the problem there. But there's two of them because it was Na2SO4. That'd be times two again because of this two right here. And that'll also be over the total volume of 20 milliliters. And my millis will cancel and my molarity comes to be 0.35 molar. Got it? And then the last one, of course, is the sulfate. Now this one's a little tricky, but not horribly. So the concentration of the sulfate. Let me go back to the initial screen again. So if you find the sulfate right here, this is where with this one comes into place. Right. Because 2.5 of the sulfates got used up. We've got one left over. One millimole left over. So that'll be one millimole. We don't have to multiply that by any number. There's Actually, just one millimole per unit. divided by our 20 milliliters. One twentieth is 0 0.05. Yeah. 0 0.05. I think we can keep one more digit mm -hmm. molar there. And that are that that are that, that are. is the vents. Hammer of the ions. That is the answer to the question. Yeah. Now one other thing, just as far as terminology goes, and our problem here says what are the concentrations of all ions. It could have said what are the concentrations of all species present. That's just another term uh, that's used for things floating around in solution. You'll see that in the book and on the AP test. This is really kind of a big accounting problem. It's Pretty kind much. of how I see it. You've got to account for all them and then just keep track of all your numbers. That's why these tables are handy, the BCA tables yeah. and later the ICE tables. Yeah. All right. So example two is a similar type of a problem. This one has some coefficients, and that's yes. why we choose mm -hmm. this one. And so here's example number two. So I'm going to start with a nice white screen. And So we have sodium phosphate. Sodium has a charge of positive one. And phosphate, hold on, let me just is uh, negative uh, 3. So it's Na3PO4. I just don't need to put the parentheses there. Nope. Plus um, copper 2 chloride. CuCl2. Now that's going to double displace. Now sodium with its one charge and chloride with its one charge will make NaCl. Knackle. That's the knackle. But this other one's going to be quite complex. It'll yeah. be Cu3 three. parentheses PO4 2. Right. So that's copper 2 phosphate. Copper. Mr. Bergman, if it's copper 2 phosphate, why is there a little 3 after the copper? Because it's the charge that matters when you say copper 2. Thank you. Just want right. to make sure. It's all about the charge. Mm -hmm. You see, that 3 is not now. Hmm. Now, we need to balance this equation. Now, when you're attempting to balance, you look for the most complex compound. Yep. That would obviously be the complex compound. So I'm going to do my copper first because I need three coppers from here. Yep. And I have two phosphates, and I put it two here. That gives me how many sodiums? It's like there? six sodiums and, and six, six chlorines. And I get three times two or six chlorines. Perfect. So that is the correct balance equation. Mm -hmm. I'm going to write down what I know. I have 50, 50 mils 
This is 50 milliliters of 0.1 molar sodium phosphate. Zero molar. And 50 milliliters of 0.1 molar copper chloride. 50 milliliters. 